Hidden Figures tells the incredible true story of three brilliant African-American women at NASA who helped orchestrate the historic launch of astronaut John Glenn into space. Take a look. Ladies, I didn't want to run off without saying hello. <laughs> Seem to be in a bigger rush around here. Well, the Russians certainly are slowing down. Any. You know, they can't build a damn refrigerator. How the heck they beat us into space? <laughs> I am so pleased to be joined by the actor who got to step into some seriously influential moon boots, Glenn Powell. What's up, what's up? Hi. How you doing? John Glenn. Yeah. No big deal. NBD. That yeah. is a huge role. Yeah, yeah, it's a big, it's been, yeah, it's been a, been a great ride. Obviously, you know, when you step in those shoes, you, um, kind of know what you're taking on, but yeah, it's been good so far. Nobody's nobody's called me out for being a, a total phony space guy yet. Did you like my moon boot? Step into the moon boot pun? It, it was hot. It was, it was a really, like yeah, it, it worked. I thought you would like that. <laughs> so Hidden Figures, the film is getting amazing praise by anybody who has seen it. And if you haven't seen it, it's out in theaters. You really, really should. It tells this incredible story about, I just, I feel like three women that we never would have known helped get John Glenn, where John Glenn needed to be, which was space. That is true. Yeah, he uh, yeah he did three orbits around the Earth, and uh, it was definitely a great American moment when kind of the morale of the U.S. was at an all-time low. And um, yeah, I think it's important for stories to be told like this. This is kind of crazy that we've gone this long and we haven't known about these three women that were responsible for one of the greatest American moments, and and obviously um, you know responsible for the the moon landings that happened later. And you know they have. Uh, they have an incredible legacy that literally has gone, you know, been erased from the history book, so to speak. Because we all, I mean, we, or you should be, read a book, kids. We should all be familiar with John Glenn and his history and what he's meant to us as Americans and uh, to space. And But I feel like the movie, we got to see him a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, actually. You know, we got to kind of see him as just, I mean, he's John Glenn, American hero, but we kind of got to see you as just John Glenn. He's an astronaut. He goes to work. This is his job. Yeah, well, he's a very, I mean, he's a very normal, he's a very humble uh, man. And um, talking to some of these astronauts, I didn't get a chance to meet John, but talking to some of these astronauts after the fact, um, there's this great story that um, one of the astronauts told me about how he was at, he was one of the guys that went up with John um, when he went back, like, what, 20, it was like, was it 10 years ago or something like that? Um, and he was talking about how he was in the corner with his wife Annie, and his, he had a shrimp in his hand, and they were just alone, and he had a shrimp in his hand. He goes, babe, bark like a seal. And she goes, oh, 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 and he threw the shrimp in her mouth. <laughs> and I was like, what a great, like, uh, like a cute, romantic moment. He, he was a very um, ordinary, humble, stand-up guy who loved his wife and loved his country and, you know, uh, never, never intended to be a hero, but that's what he was. Talking about actual, actually filming this project, um, you got to play opposite some really fantastic women in this industry. Amazing, yeah. Were you a yeah. little intimidated? Well, I mean, they're, they they come on strong. I mean, there's 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 not there's not a a, a female in that group that that doesn't have. Um, I always joke we call Taraji Taraji the tornado because she comes just with like <laughs> full force when she walks in a room. You're very aware she's there. Um, but yeah, every single woman in this movie, they're 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 so talented and they're they're so gracious and humble. They were all when my mom my mom's in the um, my mom my dad and my little sister are all in the handshaking line uh, for that scene. And Taraji and Kirsten and Octavia, they were made sure that they were front and center for every angle. They were helping them to make sure that. And my mom and my little sister have close ups in this movie because of it. So that's um, amazing. Yeah, yeah, they're just, they're just great that people. Was, that scene was such a beautiful moment for your character. Yeah, I think yeah. that's where, you know, in this particular scene, this sort of handshaking line, John Glenn is going to be shaking the hands of everybody at NASA, and the lines are separate. You have the white people over here and the African Americans over here, and he really makes it a point to go and shake everyone's hand. Yeah. And that, I think, was one of those beautiful moments where we don't think about American heroes or people his, in history as people. Well, and, and also John was, uh, you know, there, were, there was a certain, this, this movie's not about, you know, where they vilify, you know, white people, um, you know, at all. It was, they, what they were attempting to do here is show that there was, it took a guy like John to obviously change the inertia, change the momentum of racism, because racism was just something that kind of had this, like, this, this momentum that, you know, you had to have somebody that went, hey, you know, no, that's not cool. Like, we got to say hi to everyone. And realize at the end of the day that that uh, progressive mindset and that ability to see people as uh, more than just skin color or gender is what saved his life. That's and that's really what the, the film is all about. It yeah. really gets down to that core uh, value of people just being people and um, allowing 
each other to put their differences aside or you know what have you and just celebrate sort of the brilliance that makes people what they are and yeah. had we not done that these women wouldn't have gotten John Glenn out and back safe completely which is I think what we need kind of right now in this country is obviously to you know I think it's a very divisive time where I think people this is a movie that doesn't um, end on a downer it's a movie that'll make you laugh cry stand up and cheer and makes you proud to be an American you know and I think it's a uh, I think it's definitely one to take everybody to. Everybody asks me, like, can my seven-year-old see this? I'm like, it's PG, and it doesn't feel like it's not. It's not a kids' movie. It's an adult movie that I think you know everybody should watch. I think it's awesome. So obviously, you're an actor. You've been in lots of great things, hidden figures. We know you from Scream Queens. So you're cool on set. Did your mom and sister? How did they do professionally on set? Were you? Well, oh. Did you feel good about that? Um, let's see, my mom My mom gets a close-up in Scream Queens. She's a reporter in Scream Queens, expendable. She's like a, an art dealer. It's like bring your mom to work day all the time. Yeah, well, she kind of expects it now. Now, now, now it's a little bit more of a burden, you know. <laughs> that she, she has a great time, but like honestly, now that I can, you know, I've kind of been the, the low-level guy where I'm kind of like, hey, can, do you mind if my mom gets here? Now, like, I think people are kind of hearing about it. Now they're like, which scene are we putting your mom in, you know? I just, you know, so hopefully we'll get her. She's She wants her... Um, I'll have what she's having moment eventually, you know. That's got to be terrifying for you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's a, she's a terrible actress. We'll get her there, but she's she she has not figured it out yet. Oh no, no, no. she's great. She's I super talented. She's lovely. Love that. No, she's. I absolutely love that. But yeah, so we're getting her. We're and everything. She'll be. Um, she'll definitely be. I didn't take her over to Jordan. I did this movie called Sandcastle, but Jordan was a little bit hairy. I can't imagine there's a role for a mom. Hey, Somewhere in a war movie. She's found her way, it seems like, in every <laughs> yeah, other project. Yeah. I think if yeah, yeah. if you build it, mom will come. Mom will come, yeah. Yeah, there's, she could play like just like a hardened old lady marine. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> there is um, one scene in this movie where you're in your full on sort of spacesuit garb. Uh -huh. That costume was amazing. Yep. What was that like to actually walk around in? I was actually, <laughs> they asked me where I was talking to the, my, my friends over here and then we were talking about that spacesuit. Um, it's basically like trash can lining in the, uh, the spacesuit, so you sweat a whole lot and also takes like 45 minutes to get on and off. So you don't really go to the bathroom. Um, you just kind of can't drink water all day. So you're just kind of like hanging out and... and, and just pouring so, sweat. So look, I, I will say it feels very cool to be in that spacesuit initially, and then you realize the reality of it, and you're like, oh, okay, like, maybe last day of space, like, it's probably a good thing. I like going to the bathroom. I have a good time doing it. I like drinking water. I you think know. that's fair. You know, those kind of things, but... Uh, actually, I mean, Clearly we, you can be a bit of a diva on set if you're asking to go to the bathroom and drink oh, water. You don't, yeah, you don't, you don't even know, yeah. Well, and then to really show them that, you know, who's boss, I always pee in every costume I have. <laughs> Just to make sure they know I was here, you know? I don't even know what to say <laughs> yeah. to something like that. I can shut down an interview real yes, fast. Yes, yeah. and that then we're going to wrap. No, we're not going to stay here. We're not wrapping. We're going to stay here. But, yeah, peeing. I bet you there are some diva celebrities out there that have peed in weird places I've on set that they should stories shouldn't. about people where, you know, to mark, I, I always think to they're To mark their territory? Ter no, I'm not even kidding. To mark say? their territory, yeah. Like, I've heard stories about people where they go, they're like, yeah, this guy always pees in, on every set he's ever done. I'm like, what? I, I honestly think I should start doing that to just start an, like, urban legend. Like, be like, do you hear, hear Glenn? You know? He, he hides a cup of pee somewhere in every kitchen set he's in. And you're like, Just what? don't actually do that. Why? But on behalf of all your future co-stars, I'm going to go ahead and request that you don't leave a cup. And for the crew members who would have to yeah. find the cup of pee and dispose of it. Yeah, no, it's just not a cool thing. Um, so I won't do that one. Um, I, I, I've been known to prank prank people on set. Like my mom, actually, when she came over to Bulgaria, she, she and my aunt, Honey, they're very big on pranks. Because my aunt was a magician, so she's got all these like props and it, things it on her like all the time. It sounds like you have the most fun family Some ever. Weird family, yeah. My 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 aunt. Um, so she's got this. My always carries fake snot and a fake cockroach on her wherever she goes, right? And so, the fake snot is my favorite. I should have brought it today. That would have been awesome. <laughs> I could have really freaked you out. Fake snot. You could be that guy who brings pranks to every interview. I think I'm gonna do that. At the SAG Awards. Just wait. You're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get some of like my favorite childhood heroes. I'm gonna because it's just a basic piece of rubber snot that you go. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> and then people just lose it. Um, but the, the, the fake cockroach is pretty good. She put it in the bread bowl in front of Mel Gibson and scared the heck out of him. Um, 
anyway, so that's my family. I don't even know how we got there. That's amazing. Every Yours must be a delight on set. I think it's a riot, but I think if I would have found the bread bowl with the cockroach in it, I might have had a heart attack. <laughs> no, I think people are, you know, I think sometimes you, you forget that all you're doing is playing pretend and like the set is the most fun place to be. And I think a lot of people start treating it like an office. And as soon as that happens, then you're, then you take all the fun out of what we're doing. You know, you take all the magic out of it. And it seems like, especially with a film like Hidden Figures, um, it is such a feel-good film, mm -hmm. and people are responding to it too well. I mean, here at um, Husay, we talk a lot about social media and influence, um, mm -hmm. and I see on your social, you repost a lot of these great things that people are saying. Are you, yeah. um, Are you, I, I guess you're not surprised, but is it kind of touching to see how fans are responding to you in this film and to this film as a whole? Or, you know, I mean, just the film in general. I mean, you, you kind of put your heart and soul in, into these things and you hope people like them. Um, so anytime anybody just like obviously is saying to the world, hey, you gotta go see this movie, I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> I'd love to repost them because I think, I think that obviously um, that's what you need is people to obviously see a movie like this. I've made great movies that nobody's seen, you know, because, you know, it's, it's hard to get people in the movies these days. Um, and I think there's one that everybody should see. So it's like when people shout to the, the hilltops, go see it. I'm like, I'm with you, brother. That has to be, it's interesting that you just said that you've made great movies that you feel like no one has seen. That has to be such an odd feeling for you as an actor who really wanted people to respond or to see something in a certain yeah. way and to know it just didn't have the legs to get out there. It's gotta be frustrating. Yeah, well especially, I mean look, they're, they're movies, I've made terrible movies, that you're like, <laughs> I hope nobody sees this. Um, and you're like, oh God, you know, they're like, hey, what do you press on this one? I was like, I kinda wanna crawl up in a ball. Um, and not say anything to anyone. But, you know, I made this movie called Everybody Wants Um, this, that came out this year, uh, that Richard Linklater directed. It's like the spiritual sequel to Days and Confused. Um, and it's a great movie. It's a great movie, and they just, you know, unfortunately just kind of got buried. Um, and so when you make a movie that, you know, people love, like the critics loved it, like fans loved it, and it was just kind of a bummer because, uh, you know, you just start to realize there's so many things for people to do with their free time these days. You really have to. To, you, you almost have to just grab them by the, you know, <laughs> bear hug them and throw them in the theater yourself. You know, I'd do that for this movie, for sure. Well, luckily for this movie, you don't People, have to I, do yes, that. Yes, there is no, I do not have to place individual audience members in the seats. That would be exhausting, I'd be very tired. I'd be in better shape, but it'd be good, yeah. You seem like you're in, your shape is just fine, thank uh, you very much. <laughs> and on that incredibly awkward note, um, Hidden Figures is out in theaters. Glenn does not put P on set. And he also does not force people to go see movies when but they don't want to. But you should go see Hidden Figures. You should go see Glenn yeah. as John Glenn in Hidden Figures, which is yeah. out in theaters now. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much.